Hello there everybody, how's it going? I'm the Tmeister and welcome back to another episode of the Greater Timbuktu Region. It's been a while guys and I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to uh, be producing some more videos for you guys and uh, get back on track with this series and uh, I kind of missed it. It was really nice to take a little bit of time off though and uh, work on some other projects and, and you know just enjoy the summer, relax, no stress. Uh, but I'm excited to get back into the game and um, and to bring you guys some more content. I hope you guys are as excited as I am. So let's get started. Uh, so where we left off in the last episode, um, we had just sort of completed the downtown area for Burton and I didn't really get into much detailing or anything like that and uh, I was gonna leave that for another episode uh, but when it came to editing um, I'm not sure what really happened uh, there was a little bit of footage that was missing and some pieces missing so I figured well I mean it's not really gonna make a nice quality episode for you guys so I figured it would just be better if I skip right on to the port and that's exactly what we're going to do in this episode. Uh, we're going to be developing the Port of Burton, which is the second largest port in the entire region. Uh, the biggest port's just across the river in Timbuktu. It's going to be much larger and much more developed. But that doesn't mean that the Port of Burton is any less important. It's a huge economic icon for the region. So to start off with the port, um, the first thing I'm doing right now after uh, laying down the seawalls and all that sort of infrastructure, um, I'm starting to build the entry point into the port. So uh, we have the checkpoint right here. There's, I think, four or five lanes. And uh, just after uh, we're seeing these yellow lines here, uh, there's going to be these container scanners. So I've done a little bit of research on how ports sort of work. And uh, my knowledge isn't quite extensive, but from what I could gather, um, there's these container scanners that trucks will go through. And it just sort of x-rays the entire container uh, to see what's inside. So. I forget where I found these on the workshop. Actually, I think these were toll cameras for a toll booth, um, like a like an automatic toll bridge or something. Uh, but then the less, they look super nice here and uh, pretty realistic. Just to give you guys a little idea on the setting for this port, I'm basing it off of a port in Halifax. Uh, Halifax has like three or four different large ports. And there's one that's more inland than the rest. It's sort of in its own little corner. And it's actually one of the bigger ones in the city, it looks like. Uh, so that is what I've gotten inspiration for. Because uh, it's a port that I've seen a few times firsthand. Um, so just basing myself off of memories and uh, Google images and, and a few other things. Um, I was able to, to create something relatively similar uh, with the space that I have here in Burton. So right now I'm just plopping down the exit lanes for the toll booth and rather than having four entry lanes uh, there's just two for, uh, for the exit. As you can see right here, I just deleted that uh, dry dock or whatever it was. Um, I'm going to decide to move the entire toll area uh, north a little bit. And that's just to, uh, to get it out of the way. Uh, because I wasn't able to fit as many containers in this area as I, uh, I initially would have liked. So we're going to get to that a little later. Uh, but I just wanted to give you guys a little context um, as to why I moved this entire uh, thing and that is thanks to uh, to the move it mod without it it wouldn't be possible I would have had to rebuild that entire thing so uh, thanks to the creators of the move it mod um, you know especially in the uh, city skylines community I mean I, I think everybody can appreciate uh, the move it tool as it, it's probably one of the most frequently downloaded and, and used mods out there on the workshop so um, thank you for that 
So uh, we're laying out some cranes now, and I plopped down this ship here just uh, for size comparison. And this was a little tricky here for these rails uh, because they're the, the yellow line isn't very thick, um, and the ground being somewhat uneven, it was sort of challenging to get them to appear just right. Uh, but the, this whole project was really challenging, honestly. It's the first time that I've built anything like this, and uh, it, it came as a surprise as to how challenging it was. So if you guys know like a lot about seaports and how they work, because um, like I said, my knowledge is not very extensive, uh, give me any tips or any suggestions in the comment section. I sort of screwed up right here. Um, I started plopping down, uh, I guess, a series of containers here. And I was a little limited on, uh, I guess, the amount of containers I had in my, uh, my workshop list here. And as you can see, there's sort of two different styles of containers. And I tried to sort of mix and match the two between each other. And looking back now, I mean, it looks terrible, um, <laughs> but I end up uh, fixing it a little later in the episode for uh, one particular style of containers. And I forget, I think it's the brighter containers that I end up going for, because um, I don't think I had downloaded uh, the entire pack that was offered on the workshop, so I only had like three or four different kinds of containers. Um, but I end up fixing it a little later in the episode, so that's good. Uh, so everything worked out pretty nicely. So this is actually the first sort of seaport that I've ever built in the game. Well, actually, no. Back in the uh, Aubrey City days, it was like one of the first episodes I had built um, a seaport. But the amount of content on the workshop back then, I mean, that was like that was like two years ago, two or three, no, two years ago. Um, wow, time flies, guys. Uh, the amount of content that was available in the workshop was really limited compared to what it is now. So at that time, I think I was just plopping like these huge pre-built uh, seaport containers and you know, you just already had the container sort of laid out for you. Uh, but now, I mean, with all the props and everything that are available, uh, you can create some much more complex and uh, immersive areas in your cities. So what I'm working on now, guys, you're probably wondering, what the heck am I doing? Um, so again, slightly inspired by Halifax, uh, there's a railroad heading into the seaport that sort of follows the coastline. And, you know, it got me thinking, a seaport can only be as effective as the amount of transportation to take the goods away from the seaport. All right, so the boat comes in, unloads all the containers. Well, you need an effective way of taking those containers inland, whether it be by truck or by train. And with the location of the Burton Seaport, that being behind a huge hill and sort of nestled in its own corner, and I guess if we sort of put a realistic story behind it, um, you know, Burton is an old city and uh, train transport was a lot more popular back then, so it only makes sense that a large train line would head right into port. Uh, so basically what I built is um, just that, a train line that sort of follows the coast. Obviously the coast is like a huge cliff, but um, you know, back in the day, uh, you know, th there was no shortage of huge uh, engineering feats uh, regarding train infrastructure. So you would never see anything like this be built today. I mean, especially in North America, th the train is sort of a thing of the past, uh, but back in like the late or the early 20th century and late 19th century. I mean, trains were probably the most economical and feasible mode of transportation. So uh, I guess the amount of money and, and uh, investments that were thrown at trains were pretty huge. So in my opinion, it only makes sense. And uh, it is quite realistic that something like this would have been built. So that's the story that I'm going for for this. So it's not going to be the most functional train yard in the city. Um, in fact, I don't think it's going to be functional at all. There's no train stations or anything along this line. I was purely going for aesthetics. Uh, but nonetheless, it looks really great. In my opinion, looks very realistic for uh, this sort of setting. It's kind of funny because that SimCity cutscene that I showed you at the beginning of the video, uh, there's no sign of trains like anywhere in Burton. 
So uh, this is purely like a, a new thing. So about that, if, if you join the series a little late, um, I'll give you, I'll put you into context a little bit with the whole SimCity thing. So back in 2011, now I know this because I was browsing some old SimCity saves, and for this particular save, the one that I showed you in the beginning of this episode, uh, the earliest edited file was back in 2011, so I can only assume that it was around that time period when this whole region was developed in, in SimCity 4. And the latest was 2015, so that sort of gives me the idea that I stopped working on the city in 2015. So about four years went into the original Timbuktun region in SimCity 4. Back then it was Rockport, by the way. And I'm gonna go off, off track here a little bit. And uh, originally when I was gonna start this series, I was gonna name it Rockport, you know, just to keep it with its original roots. Uh, but the Timbuktun name popped into my head and I thought, you know, it, it was a fitting name for this channel. Obviously, you know, Tim Eister and Timbuktun, you know, it's kind of funny. And uh, I thought that, you know, you guys would get a little kick out of it. And maybe some of you did, maybe some of you think it's super cheesy, but whatever, I like it. And anyway, um, so back in 2011, back in 2011, I began uh, this huge project. So I downloaded a map, and by the way, it's uh, a city in Denmark, I believe. This uh, what, what this map is. It was a reasonable size for a SimCity map, and my goal for that map was to fill in the entire thing, just to complete one project. I was set out to to just finish a huge project once and for all. Um, so my strategy for doing that was to build a medium-sized city because everything that I was building before then was just huge metropolises and you know just big cities and obviously they take a lot more time and effort uh, so with building a small to medium-sized city uh, it was a lot more manageable and uh, what was also a good strategy for that was to fill in a lot of the map with trees and just, you know, farms and things that you could just do quickly and, uh, and, it, and it still looked really good. So obviously like Aberdeen and I dotted a few little towns here and there on the map just to provide a little bit of filler. Um, so within what I think is four years, I was able to complete the entire map and obviously there is like entire blocks of the map which are just trees and there's nothing there but I still think it counts and you know I mean that that map is is a uh, is a pretty amazing feat in my virtual city building career which spans since I was like 10 years old so I was always a huge fan of city building games As you see now, I've moved over the entry point to the port and it gave me a lot more room to plop down some crates and I think it looks a little bit more realistic and it basically just gave me a little bit more room to play around with. So here I started experimenting with yet another crate pack that I found on the workshop and now everything looks like a huge mess. Um, there's like three different styles of crates. Uh, but a little later in the episode, I end up correcting all of this and I end up settling for one style of crate I believe it's the the one that I'm holding right now. It's like the least saturated uh, Sort of I don't know it, it in my opinion It looks the most realistic maybe with a different LUT other crates would look better in this type of area but uh, in this case the crates that I'm plopping out right now are uh, are the best looking at I find and I think they're real brands as well or real companies or liveries or whatever you want to call it 
Uh, so that as well adds some realism. All right, so here is when a little screw up begins to happen. Um, not, <laughs> I accidentally deleted this rail here, uh, but that's not what I was talking about. So I started plopping down some trains and and I had posted a teaser picture on my Discord page of this rail yard that's coming up in a moment here. If you're sort of into the city skylines scene, uh, you know that uh, Bisklikelhausen is like the main train guy. You know, he's just so knowledgeable on how trains work and how they should look. Uh, he contacted me and told me that the trains that I'm using in this setting are more in a European configuration. Uh, so I guess it's the style of trains or I'm not really sure um, But he suggested that I opt for a more American uh, Style of trains and I was totally unaware of this while I was building this so this as well um, Off-camera I end up correcting the only downfall was I've I only done the corrections after filming this entire episode so um, What you're seeing me plop down now has changed a little bit um, not by much, I mean, the trains are sort of still in the same location, it's just the uh, the styling has changed a little bit. Uh, but that's not a big deal. So as I mentioned just a second ago, there is a rail yard that I am plopping down right here. And essentially, from what I understand, a rail yard is basically just a temporary storage place for containers and whatnot. And uh, I don't know by heart the logistics on how they work. I've done a little bit of research, uh, but this is mostly based on how they look on uh, what I've seen on, on the internet here and there. Um, so it is a quite large rail yard, but it's not gonna be the largest one in the city. Uh, just on the other side of the pond over here, um, there's going to be a much larger rail yard uh, in the port of Aubrey City. So that's to come in another episode. Alright guys, for the most part the port is complete and now all that's left to do is add some decals, some little props here and there, and I will plop down a warehouse or two in just a minute here. Uh, but for the most part, this is it. So I hope it serves as inspiration to you guys who are looking to build a port. Uh, this was a first for me and it was an overall good experience, although it required a lot of, uh, 
well not a lot, but I mean, it required some studying. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is pretty much it for this episode. Uh, next episode, we're going to develop a particular, I guess, borough of Burton. The name of that borough is called the Slayton Peninsula, and it's a residential slash industrial uh, area just southwest of downtown, and I mean, it's on a, a mountainous peninsula. Also in the next episode, I almost forgot to mention, we're going to be creating a large project near downtown. Uh, in the last episode, I had posted a poll on what I should do with uh, one of the largest intersections in the city uh, that connects downtown to the main highway going through. And a lot of you uh, voted for a DDI interchange, so a diamond diverging interchange. And I thought that was a great idea to use up some of that space. Uh, so we're going to develop that next episode, so stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm not going to give you any more details than that, I just wanted to give you guys a little heads up on what's to come. Uh, so yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this episode guys, as did I. Uh, like I said, it's so nice to get back into the game, get back into a nice routine. Um, just to give you a little heads up in, uh, in my personal life, I'm yet again moving. We're, um, we're settling in the location for probably the next year, year and a half before purchasing my own home. So this is just another step in our journey and uh, let's hope everything pans out quite well. So just wanted to let you guys know that there might be a little lapse in my usual routine of uploading videos once every two weeks, week and a half, two weeks. So expect a little delay, it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, I have a crap ton of stuff to move and I'm gonna be um, modifying my uh, my PC setup in our new place. So I'm not sure how the sound quality is gonna change. It is a quite open area, so there might be a little bit more echo than usual, but it shouldn't be too bad. Nonetheless, I can't wait to be settled into my new place. It's gonna fix a lot of logistical problems for me. Uh, so hopefully it'll enable me to bring some more quality content and uh, a little bit more quicker that way. Uh, but we'll see. I'm not making any promises right now, but that is the plan. Alright, so with all that being said guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode and I can't wait to get started on the next episode. Uh, in fact, Next episode is already recorded, um, so I just have to piece it together, do a little bit of voiceover, and we should be all set to go. So I'm really happy to get back into a routine of, uh, you know, bringing you guys some more episodes and content. And uh, I have been playing City Skylines for probably the past two or three weeks quite extensively in my free time, and uh, that way I'm able to, you know, pre-record a whole bunch of footage and it enables me to roll out some content a little bit quicker. I'm gonna try as much possible to establish a nice routine and release a video once every week and a half to two weeks. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to deliver on that promise. Uh, but as you all know, I am a working class citizen and uh, sometimes it's a little hard to find a lot of free time, but I appreciate your guys' patience. Uh, that's all I have to say for this episode, guys. Um, before I forget though, be sure to stay at the end of the video. There are some pretty nice cinematics coming up in just a second here. So we'll get into that. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it for today. So until the next episode guys, please take care.